Hello, and welcome to the new LinkedIn Learning Community. My name is Benjamin Kepner. I'll be the host of your LinkedIn Learning Community. And today we're gonna to start our first group coaching session on diving deeper into LinkedIn specific topics. For today's presentation, we're gonna be talking about how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. So let's go ahead and get started. How to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Why LinkedIn? Well, LinkedIn is the largest business-oriented networking website with over 675 million monthly users in over 200 plus countries. It can help rank your name on Google. There's only 30 million companies that are on LinkedIn and your cost per lead on LinkedIn is 28% lower than Google Ads. We see that people are also using LinkedIn as recruiters to research and recruit candidates. And four out of five people on LinkedIn drive business decisions. So things like CEOs, for example, might be networking with other entrepreneurs. Finally, 89% of B2B marketers use LinkedIn for lead generation. So we know that this is a great place if we are trying to do business to business. Optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Let's start with the basics. So step one would be to make sure that you have a professional headshot or picture and a background. I've got an example here of what my LinkedIn profile looks like at the present moment. You can see I've got a high quality professional 400 by 400 pixelated headshot. It's recommended that you make this visible. Try not to have your face covered in any way with hats or maybe some type of distracting background. We want to have something that's professional. They can see our face so that they can recognize us. You don't have to be in a suit and tie, but just a nice picture of you where I can see your face. And as you can see, kind of like even showing your entire body isn't necessary. In the background, you can see I've got a cover photo and that cover photo is to ultimately hopefully drive people. Think of this as the first thing that people will see at the top of your LinkedIn profile. So you wanna be able to drive people to do something. And you can see an example for our cover photo. I'm driving people to buy our link on Amazon and saying that the link is below my profile. So you know exactly what might be there for you on my profile of value to take action, right? You could do other things here. Let's say if you're a salesperson, for example, if you wanted to put your name and your email to contact you, that might be another good relevant use case. Step two, headline and summary. So you can see an example of my headline from last year. I have changed this moving forward for 2021 and some of the different types of words that I've used. So you want to kind of try to keep your headline brief, but also paying attention to keywords, right? So this is going to be the first impression when somebody visits your profile again, they're going to see your headline, they're going to see your picture and they're going to see your cover photo. So you want to make sure that you are communicating on what exactly it is that you do or offer in that type of headline section. So you can see, for example, for me, right, as the CEO of Global Social Media Marketing, I do have my company name there, but really I have that keyword there because we're offering social media marketing globally. Also, you can see that I've got Google Trainer, if people were looking for Google Training Solutions, YouTuber, if somebody was maybe looking for YouTube speaking or YouTube videos, excuse me, podcast speaker, if I'm trying to get opportunities to be on other podcast and then i'm obviously also selling some products on amazon i'm an influence there maybe some brands wanted to work with me as an influencer and finally events we all know that i'm hosting this new community the linkedin learning community as well as still managing any events that will be happening in denver colorado for network after work as their event manager you can also see that i've got an about section right and i don't have all the information here we'll take a step back and look at my final completed profile but just wanted to show you the first kind of section right there. As soon as you go to the about section of my profile, you know exactly what I can do potentially for you. So think about who you can help in here, what type of value, maybe what is your focus, so that people know exactly who you're serving and what you do in that first sentence. So mine's very simple. I help businesses and schools achieve social media marketing, education, technology, training, and international business expansion goals worldwide. So turn it into a story too. Don't make it so cut and dry and corporate. Try to be personalized and authentic. You can use different things like relevant media, images, videos, or articles as well so they can introduce visitors to your work. 
Consider adding future goals and ambition and ambitions as well in addition to past achievements. These will kind of differentiate your profile and really give people a better understanding of your overall experience. So step three, workplace information and skills. You want to keep your workplace experiences relevant and up to date, right? If we're going to be maybe taking a career path in sales, for example, we may not want to include if we had some graphic design work or if we were maybe necessarily developing a website. Those are not what we might be looking for in a sales career path. So I would say best practice, if you're early on in your career, for example, as a college student or a recent graduate, that's going to make sense to maybe go back and list maybe if you've had a restaurant job or customer service jobs, because, you know, at least you can show that you've had work and you're responsible enough to actually go above and beyond during your college experience and have a job as well. But if you're a little bit further on in your career, right, maybe that Longhorn server job is not going to be as relevant anymore in your career path. So try to have things on your profile that are relevant, add interesting projects and achievements as well too, so people have a better understanding. One classic mistake that I see from people on LinkedIn is they just list their title and their company, but they don't fill in any of the description about what they actually did there. I heard a quote from a person recently this year that it said, it's not about where you've worked, but it's what you've done. So tell that story, show people your skill sets and those successes that you've had, and those will really allow people to understand more what you're capable of in your experiences at those jobs. You can also ask friends and colleagues to endorse you and endorse them back. So I'll show you an example of how to do that as well when we show my profile. And then more is not more when it comes to LinkedIn skills. You want to focus on the skills that are going to be the most relevant to your profile, right? So look at your experiences. Try to have a consistent keyword. If you've got 50 or 100 plus skills, you need to kind of limit those, right? You're using too many. You really need to focus on the keywords that are related to your industry or job so that you could potentially be found in search results for those. And skills is just another layer of being able to be found on LinkedIn. Optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Let's start with the pro stuff. So step four on your profile to optimize it would be to have recommendations and certifications or certificates. You can see, for example, if you click on the more recommend feature, that's where you're going to be able to go recommend people or request a recommendation. Another good thing that you could do there, right, is asking your colleagues. That's a low hanging fruit. Or if you've worked with your boss, for example, or again, maybe even if you have a friend and you're just trying to build up your recommendations. They're actually becoming more and more popular and important because people now are looking at a LinkedIn profile, not only as a futuristic resume, but also as a credibility factor on your work and being able to see if you had loyalty or were able to actually work well with others and have good performance based upon your experience at that work. You can see some examples of some certifications that I've lifted, listed, right? I've got some examples of some digital marketing related certifications that establish me as a thought leader in that space and can also demonstrate to my clients why I might be a better solution versus other digital marketers in the space. So stand out, showcase your certificates to get a competitive edge and get those LinkedIn recommendations to give that social credibility and prove to people that you are a person they want to work with. Step five, write articles. Funny enough, LinkedIn Publisher has only been around, or LinkedIn Pulse as it's formerly known, for roughly probably about the last five to six years. It's something that they decided to do to create a content type of platform to allow you to write articles. And the great thing about this is that they stay on your profile and these actually can help you as well in search results. This is a factor in another topic we'll discuss at another time related to LinkedIn ProFinder. You can see some examples that I have of some things that I wrote in articles that had some headway. And then you can use some images as well to kind of stand out. Make sure when you write your articles that your title should not exceed 60 characters and also add relevant hashtags to your articles when you publish them to share so that people can find your articles. 
Having articles is a good way to increase your credibility again and improve your thought leadership in the space with people that are already normally logging on to LinkedIn. Step six, share relevant content. You can add value to your customers' connections by consistently being engaged with sharing pieces of information that are and add value to the people you're connected to. You can keep a close eye on your LinkedIn newsfeed by going into the activities section, which is just right below your about section, and share content that you find generally interesting and relevant. Now, as a company page, you may not be able to share, for example, another personal profile's post, but you can do that on your personal LinkedIn profile. Step seven, optimize term weight. You can actually find out the most common terms in your profile by saving your profile as a PDF, selecting all the text, and pasting that into a word cloud generator. If you aren't happy with the results, optimize accordingly. Use the right terminology to increase your search result visibility. So this is gonna help you actually be able to create more keywords, and you can just go to word clouds and start typing in some of those keywords. Optimizing your profile, tools to use. LinkedIn Learning is a new feature that they've added as well in the last two to three years on how to learn how to do many skills that you may add to your profile. It's jam packed with practical, actionable, and educational material for online learners. When you complete a course, you can add a certificate to your profile, and we do see a number of LinkedIn Learning instructors starting to evolve on LinkedIn to teach you the information that you need to get hired or have the skill sets to be successful in your current job. So LinkedIn learning, is it really worth it? Well, the pricing is $29.99 per month, or you could do it for a year for less than 300. It's really another option for you to learn by subject, software, or learning paths and boost your resume or career with new skills and finally, it helps you to demonstrate proactive learning improvement. There's a number of online certifications, but using some of the stuff on LinkedIn Learning as it's kind of starting, you can see that you can even start with a one month free trial, see the type of information that's available there, and look to see what types of instructors are getting the most traction. Useful LinkedIn Learning courses, for example, could be things such as time management, strategy thinking, remote work foundations, learning how to do personal branding, online marketing foundations, and interpersonal communication. We've got a number of those presenters with their presentations here, so feel free to take a screenshot of this or go check out some of their LinkedIn learning courses directly on LinkedIn. So we're gonna show an example of a profile that we optimized here at Global Social Media Marketing for one of our LinkedIn marketing clients. This is an example of John Hanna Life Insurance, and you can see that this was his LinkedIn profile that we optimized and improved to help him in getting more SEO and ability for people to inquire about his services. As you can see on the left-hand side, we added some of the different types of life insurance that he offers for services, a call to action so that people could actually reach out to him and we made it really simple, right? There's his phone number and his email. You can also see we've got a nice background here. This is a nice skyline image of Atlanta where he's based, so he's being relevant. And then we can even see his title and keywords here. So we might want to improve some of these, but this was kind of what he was desiring to have to describe his position and his profile. Then we continued to add things to his about section. So you can see here, again, very early on, describing who he helps and what he does to help them. He also includes some useful information as well as the different types of services that he offers. He makes it readily available to contact him. That's another pro tip that I'll let you know is that some people will reach out to me on LinkedIn. And you know I know there's a lot of one-to-one -one kind of spammy messaging going on recently. And another way to kind of weed out any of those potential spam bots is if they haven't gone to your profile where your email or your phone number is and they're asking for your contact information, then there's a good chance that you're getting an automated LinkedIn message or a chat bot 
that isn't really a good person that you should be communicating or connecting with. Finally, he's got a nice inspirational quote to differentiate himself and showing some social proof of working with someone that's very famous, Dr. J. So you can see this kind of broken down. He's got a brief summary of his mission and his services. He makes sure to include his contact information so if somebody wants to reach out to him and they see his profile, they can. And he's got some testimonials to increase his credibility and chances of connecting with people that are looking for services like that. So that's gonna conclude everything for optimizing your profile. I did, however, want to go ahead and show an example of how my profile looks like so you can see a real world example and just quickly go through some of those features on LinkedIn. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my LinkedIn profile and show you an example of what my LinkedIn profile looks like best optimized for results in 2021. So you can see that I've added a number of different keywords there that are related to the services that I have along with my city and a nice professional shot. I'll be looking to update this cover photo this year with some of these services. And then if I go and I scroll down, you can see that my about section has been filled out with my mission statement, the services and my experience, as well as giving easy, readily available contact information for people to reach out to me about my services or collaborating. You can see that I've got some different featured posts, which is another thing that you can add to your profile. If you have a post, for example, that you post and you want to feature at the top, you can do that. You'll also see that I've been recently active through communicating and sharing. You'll be able to actually see that by clicking on see all activity. And then if you need to, to filter by the type of activity, we can filter by some of the activity that I've done all to date, articles that I might've posted, posts that I might have actually released, or if for whatever reason, if I had shared a document. So now to go back and quickly just show you the rest of my optimized profile, you can see also that I have added my different work experiences with filling them out and making sure to add relevant media, whether in the form of a photo or video. And you can see all of those have been added. If you want to see an example of how to do that, it's pretty simple. You'll just click on the pencil icon and make sure that you filled in your title, the company, the location, and your dates. Once that's been done, you definitely want to make sure that you fill in your description with relevant information. And if I need to add a photo, video, presentation, website link, I can do that. For example, if I wanted to share a YouTube video, I could just click on link and then I could go to YouTube and go grab a video to share on my profile so that people actually can watch a video directly from one of my experiences. So you can see I've got an example of a video. These right here. are getting darker. I'll just go ahead and grab that. And if for whatever reason I wanted to share that in my profile, I could paste that in and add that, giving it then the opportunity to have a nice thumbnail that's automatically generated with a description. And I could click apply. And now that has been added to my profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that also in case you wanna be able to remove that. You could do the same thing with a website link or something if you wanted to show on your website. So I'm going to go ahead and just click out of this. Now, if I scroll down further, after you, my job experience, you can see all that stuff. You can see my education. It's been filled out. I've got the right tags also of the universities. You want to make sure that that populates. You just click on that and those will populate. I've added some different media. Here's my different certifications. Very simple, just by adding the certification, choosing the organization, and doing the dates. If you do have a URL or an ID, that's great as well too, but I just leave it pretty simple. Volunteer experience is also a relevant section that you can add. And finally, you've got the different skills. So if you wanna add a skill, you can just go ahead and use some of the ones that they suggest. I would recommend working on the ones that you feel are the most relevant. And if I wanna move these around for whatever reason, then I can move these around. Now, pro tip, let's say for example, in my case, I'm using social media marketing and I've already kind of maxed out. They're gonna show 99 plus in your profile, but then after you hit 99 plus, it's actually going to kind of not show anymore after that, right? So if I wanted to choose the three skills to feature in the top, I could actually pin this one and deselect one. So I'm gonna deselect YouTube and come back and select social media marketing and save. And now you can see that the new one has changed. 
as a pro tip, what I would say is, is don't list if you reach the 99 max, try to list the other ones that need to get more ranking. That's going to help for people that are getting connected with you and know you to start giving you more endorsements for those things. Finally, you can see the recommendations here. I've got a number of people that have been with us at Global Social Media Marketing that have left tips, former clients, as well as colleagues, students, friends, and teachers from my experience over my 11 year career after leaving the University of Georgia. Now you don't have to have this many recommendations, but as you can see, the more than I can add, the better. You can also select on given to see which ones you've given to other people, as well as adding these accomplishment sections in there. Also very simple to just add, for example, a publication, a patent, course, project, honor award, test score, language, or organization. So you can see some variations of things that I've done from courses to publications to languages. And then finally, you have your interest down here at the bottom as well, if for whatever reason, you wanna go ahead and stop following an influencer or maybe stop following a company, you would just deselect that, right? And say unfollow. Also your groups should be listed here. We'll talk about groups at another stage. And then finally, any schools that you might be involved with. So this is really at a basic level, how to better optimize your LinkedIn profile to make sure that it looks clean, it's easy to contact you. And when people land on your profile, they know exactly what value you have to offer and maybe invites them to connect or reach out to you further on LinkedIn. I hope this presentation has been helpful and you found it useful in your efforts to optimize your LinkedIn profile for 2021. You can subscribe to our Global Social Media Marketing YouTube channel for YouTube tips and more LinkedIn learning below. Here's my contact information. If you're interested in our LinkedIn marketing services, please do feel free to reach out to me directly and join the LinkedIn learning community. It's gonna be an awesome year. I'm really excited about the members, panels, and discussions we're gonna be having on LinkedIn. So we hope to see you there in the LinkedIn learning community. Thanks guys and take care.